Rosemary Keller and I'm a digital artist from Mexico. On this tutorial, I'll teach you how to add more texture to your illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. So first thing we're going to do is create a new document. I had already created mine to save time, but if you don't know how to do this, I'm going to teach you very quickly how. All you have to do is go to File, New, or press Ctrl N on your keyboard. Then make sure that you create a document that is 800 by 600 pixels and select the color mode as RGB. Now I have created mine already, so I'm going to close this one. Then I'm going to go to my uh, fill and stroke. For this illustration, all is going to be fill, so I don't need the stroke right there. So I'm just going to delete it and select this orange color that I had already selected in advance. You can use the same values that I'm using here, but you can also feel free to select any colors you want. Now I'm going to be using basic shapes. So click on the basic shapes and on this little triangle to detach the window and have it close your canvas. This is a habit of mine, but if you want to use the shortcuts, that's totally fine. So let's create an ellipse tool by clicking on that one or press L on our keyboard. And a window like this is going to appear. Here I can input my values. So I'm going to go to 295 by 240 and click OK. Now I'm going to create two triangles and to do that I'm going to use the star. So just click on the star tool and then click on your canvas and now in here you have to input two radiuses. I'm going to change the values of course to 54 and then 27 and make sure that I have three points selected. I'm going to go to my selection tool and rotate by going to one of the sides and pressing shift and place it there. I want to select both my shapes Click again on the ellipse. You can see how the outline has changed, indicating that now this is a key object. I'm going to go to Window, Align, or press Shift F7 to bring this window. Now you can see how that icon is a key, indicating that I have a key object. I'm going to go to the Align Objects and click on Vertical Align Center. That way I can make sure that both of them are on the same axis. I'm going to go to Window, Pathfinder, or press Ctrl Shift F9. And then I'm going to use the second option, which is minus front, because I want to remove the triangle from the ellipse. Now I'm going to create another star by clicking on my canvas. And this one is going to have a radius of 75 by 37. Again, make sure that you have three points and click OK. I'm going to go to my selection tool and rotate it again by going to one of the, the corners and rotate it. And make sure that both of them are aligned again by selecting both of them and clicking again on the ellipse to make it the key object. And go to vertical line center and now we're going to make this one. So let's go to Pathfinder and click Unite. And you can see how all this is one single shape. Now you're going to make sure on a line that you're aligning to our board and go horizontal line center and vertical line center. So now your shape is right there on the middle. I'm going to create an ellipse for the eye. So let's make one that is 85 by 85. This is actually going to be a circle. And let's fill it with white and move it and place it roughly around there. I'm going to create another ellipse. You can see how I just zoom in there with Ctrl plus. So let's create another ellipse. I'm going to be creating another circle so I can click there to constrain both values. So now if I change one, the other one is going to change. I'm going to change the width and height to 55 and change the color to black. Move it around there. Now we have our eye. And let's create a third circle by clicking there and change the value to 105. Now for this one, I'm going to swap the stroke and the fill and I'm going to go to my stroke window and if you don't see it you can go to window stroke or press ctrl F10 now I'm going to change the weight to 2 and go to my brushes and if you don't see again the window brushes you can go to window brushes or press F5 on your keyboard on your keyboard now you're going to go to touch calligraphy brush this one is thicker and I'm going to go to my direct selection tool and select this left anchor point and just press delete on my keyboard. So now I have only half the circle. I'm going to go to my swatches or to my color and I'm going to change uh, this to a darker orange. 
and just move it around here. I'm going to create another circle by clicking on the Ellipse tool. And this one is going to be 22 by 22. I'm going to swap again the stroke and the fill and give it a lighter orange and move it around there. Now while I click and drag, I'm going to press Alt to make copies. Now that I have these three copies, I want to be able to move them around. So I'm going to select the three of them by pressing Shift when I click on each one and go to Object, Group, or you could use the shortcut Ctrl G. That way I can move the three of them faster. Now I'm going to create another ellipse by going to my ellipse tool or press L on my keyboard. And let's change the size to 55 and the other one is going to be a little bit smaller, so 38. Now I'm going to move them near the mouth of my fish. And again, I'm going to change the color to blue and group them by going object group. Now that I have this, all I need is a background. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, click on the canvas and make sure it has the same width and height of my, as my canvas. So make sure you are aligning to our board and align it to horizontal and vertical align center. Now right click, arrange, send to back or control shift open bracket. That way it's going to be sent all the way to the back and I can change the color to a darker blue. And finally, we need a little bit more texture for that blue one. So what we're gonna do is go to our tools panel and you're gonna find the line segment tool right there. Just click and while pressing shift, go to the other side the way you make a line. Let's give it a stroke. So that's going to be the, the blue color. And let's go to brushes again and select that touch color graphic brush. And for this one, I'm going to change the weight to two. Now I can go to effect, distort and transform. and then zigzag. And I'm going to be trying to make a wave so you can see how this window has appeared and you can check on that little preview and see what this is doing. I want to change the size to something like 25. Make sure that I'm doing absolute and that my widgets per segment are, let's go with five maybe. And for the points, I'm going to go smooth, so I get that wave effect, and just click OK. Now I'm going to go to my selection tool, and make a copy, sorry, move this one a little bit to the top, and then while I click and drag, I press Shift and Alt, so I make a copy, and it's on the same axis. Then I'm going to go Object, while I select both of them, Blend, Make. You can see how I have added lines between them. You can go to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and this window is going to appear, and I'm going to change the spacing to specify the steps. And let's go and click on the little preview, and instead of 10, I think 10 is too much, so I'm going to go with 9, and press OK. Now I'm going to select both of these, the backgrounds, elements, and send to back. Now it's time to add a little texture, so we're going to go to our layers window and just simply click and drag right there to create a copy of my layer. And you can see how I have done this there, but if you don't have this window open, just go to window layers. And now you can see how I have layer one and layer one copy, and both of them contain the exact same objects. What I'm going to do right now is delete on layer one copy the objects that I know are not going to be having uh, texture and you can see the difference if I remove the visibility. So what I'm going to do to the background for now is simply swapping the stroke and the fill just for now so I can see what it's on the bottom. And now I'm going to bring on the visibility on the layer one and lock it so I don't accidentally move them around. So I can only move the elements that are on layer one copy. 
I'm going to go to my fill and then I'm going to go to my gradient window and apply a gradient. Now you can see how this gradient is going from white to black. And if you don't see the gradient window, it's going to be the same. Just go to window gradient or control F9. I'm going to play a little bit with the gradient and just go to the black part. And you can see that when I click that, I can change the opacity. I'm going to go and place this one on zero. You can see how I go from nothing to a black one that is 100% opaque. And then I'm going to go to effect, texture, grain, and apply this effect to this um, gradient that I just created. I want to change the intensity and contrast a little bit. So for the intensity, I want to change it to 40. And for the contrast, I'm going to change this to 70 and just press OK. And you can see how that has been applied. I can go to the transparency window right there and change the mode. And if you don't see that window, again, window, transparency or control shift F10. I'm going to change the mode to let's go overlay and you can see how that's looking nice, but probably it's a little bit too harsh. So you can change the opacity. I'm going to change it to 40 or maybe 30 or 50. And then I'm going to do the same with the eye by clicking on it. And then I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool or press I on my keyboard and just copy it. And you can see that at first glance you don't see anything because the overlay mode is not letting you see that. But if you change that mode to multiply, you can see how that's changed. And here in the appearance window, you can see that everything's been applied. If you don't have the window, go to appearance, sorry, window appearance or shift F6. Here you can see how I don't have a stroke and I have that fill and everything. But what I don't have is the effect. So I'm going to go to effect and just simply go to the top and apply grain. This is going to apply the same effect that we applied before. And let's just play with the opacity and bring it a little bit down. For the pupil, I don't need it, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to do the same for these uh, bubbles. Just copy with my eyedropper. For this one, I'm going to change them to overlay. Go to effect, apply grain, and change the, op the opacity to something like 60. And with this, you can see how it has a lot more texture. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, rectangle, but first I'm going to show you how this texture is being applied only on layer 1 copy. I'm going to swap again the stroke and the fill, apply a gradient to this rectangle. And I'm going to actually change the type of the gradient from linear to radial and move in a little bit the location. Then apply the effect, the grain, and let's go to my transparency window and change it to overlay. Again, the opacity is probably too big, so bring it down around 30 or maybe even less. You can try other modes if you want. So overlay works for me. And I'm going to change the opacity to 20. And here you can see the difference, if I move it around a little bit, the texture, how this is uh, being applied to the illustration that is below and to the shapes that we added with gradient. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, go back to my original illustration so I can go there. To layer 1 and I'm going to change the opacity to the wave so I'm going to lock again the, the the textures and then just select those waves and let's bring down the transparency or the opacity to 20% and with this we have finished our illustration I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for watching see you next time